Griffin Poetry Prize, 2004. Judge's Citation. Louis Simpson. Louis Simpson has been enriching the tradition of poetry in English for over 60 years. From his eloquent poems of the Second World War to the later, understated, sometimes dyspeptic, tales of contemporary suburban life. He is one of the few poets of our time to have kept the art of narrative, of storytelling, alive in poetry. And yet he has done so without any sacrifice of lyric power. The work in the owner of the house enchants and disenchants in equal measure. These conversations with America, held over many decades, are informed by a melancholy clear-sightedness, a generous wry sense of humor, and a determination to celebrate the true lives and capacities of ordinary people. If Chekhov were reincarnated as a poet into the world where we live, this is surely what he would sound like. I had come to Australia for ten weeks as a guest of the state. My duties were light to confer with students. They didn't want to. They came once or twice, that was all. One night someone knocked, a student with some poems she'd like me to see. The next day I observed her in the dining room and went over. I liked, I began to say, she lifted her hands, imploring me not to speak. All around her they were talking about the usual subjects, motorbikes and football. If it got around that she wrote poems. At night I would sit in my room reading, keeping a journal, and with the aid of a map trying to learn the positions of the southern constellations. I'd look at them on the map, then go outside and try to find them in the sky before I forgot. I had recently been divorced and was starting a new life, as they say. The world lies before you, where to live and what to be. A fireman? An explorer? An astronaut? Then you look in the mirror. <laughs> it was night sweats, listening to an echo of the end. Roger had a living girlfriend. They asked if I'd like to go with them to a party and sleep over. He drove. I looked at the gum trees, not the outback, but country cattle and kangaroos and flies getting in your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. Once talking to a sheep herder, I watched a fly crawl over his face from his eye to his mouth and start walking back before he brushed it off. <laughs> they learned to put up with nature and not make a fuss like us. We arrived, I was introduced, and they made up a bed for me on the porch at the back. Then the party began to arrive, Australians, lean and athletic. They put a tape on the stereo, turned it up full blast, and danced or stood and shouted to each other, above the noise. I danced with two or three women and tried shouting. Then I went and sat on the bed on the porch. There was nowhere to go, no door I could close to shut out the noise. So I went for a walk, in the dark, away from the sound. There were gum trees, wind rustling the leaves. Or was it snakes? There are several venomous kinds, the taipan. There's a story about a child who was sitting on a log and fell backward onto a taipan. It struck him 23 times. There's the tiger snake and the brown. When they have finished telling you about snakes, they start on spiders. <laughs> you don't need these. You have only to walk into the bush. There are stories about campers who did and were lost and never seen again. All this was on my mind. I stepped carefully, keeping the lights of the house behind me in sight, and when I saw a clearing in the trees, I walked to it. 
I stood in the middle of the clearing looking at the sky. It was glittering with unknown constellations. Everything I had ever known seemed to have disappeared. And who was I standing there in the middle of Australia at night? I had ceased to exist. There was only whatever it was that was looking at the sky and listening to the wind. After a while, I broke away and went back to the lights and the party. A month later, I left Australia. But ever since, to this day, there has been a place in my mind, a clearing in the shadows, and above it, stars and constellations so bright and thick they seem to rustle, and beyond them, infinite space, eternity, you name it. There's nothing that stands between me and it, whatever it is. <laughs>